right, all right, here we go, here we go. Welcome to MIT. How's everyone feeling? Yeah. Everyone had to go, how look? No one got eight, you guys are right? I heard somebody oh. dropped in Popeye. I had the worst time. <laughs> Four buckets of water. Four buckets of uh, water. Pumpkins of uh, candy. You? Yeah, me on Sunday. Yeah. Y'all put work in. You better well, share. First of all, how many houses you hit up? Nah, this community, like, they leave the candy outside. Nice. So it was like an hour and a half. Not, oh, they just came to the drive to the boom, boom, boom. Awesome. They didn't even open the door with that, yeah. <laughs> they just go out and drink it, and they come right out, they let the kid run inside, and the candy. That's what's up. What name's crazy? I never listened to the Brooklyn. Oh, okay. So they can do that in Jersey, not in Brooklyn. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't but know. Know. it depends on the neighborhood. Bay Ridge would be nice. They just made you suck, son. <laughs> All right, guys, so welcome. Um, as we heard the hype, that is probably the card, right? I don't know. I don't think this is going to be our only time doing this. I see this being a conversation that's going to spill over into other future sessions before the semester's over at least. Um, and the party's not going to be with us, right? This is your last semester? Yeah, I'm done in the winter, guys. These are tears. Oh, oh well, at least you'll be here till February. Yeah. Should you take a class? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we may have some more sessions about this, uh, but the, today's topic that Bakari and I are facilitating. First of all, give it up for Bakari. Yeah. And one thing for Professor is not only for a student to go with flex. You know, so this is a wonderful opportunity. And the title for today is the psychology and physics of superheroes. So like, let's first start with what this is not going to be about. <laughs> this is not going to be about DC versus Marvel, or which hero is better than the other hero. Now, there will be moments, I think, where we'll compare and contrast heroes, and I think that's appropriate, especially when we talk about the physics, right? When we say Superman is stronger than the Hulk, or is that possible? You know, we may have to get into the physics of that, and that comparison may be valid, but I, valid. But I don't want you guys to think that we're just going to here have a conversation uh, and nerd out in the, in the way of comic con like, oh, this hero is better than this hero, right? So what we're going to do is we're talking about the psychology and physics of superheroes. With that said, we're going to start off first with defining psychology, defining physics, defining some terms, and then we're just going to really have an open conversation. So this is not going to be a sort of top-heavy conversation. Picard and I are going to present a few things, but we want you all to join in the conversation. Is that clear? Yeah? yeah? Cool? Let's just start first with uh, a show of hands. How many of you have read, at the very least, or have seen uh, uh, a movie or read a comic book in your life? Raise, raise your hand. Okay. okay, so there are some who have not. You have? Right, at the very least, seen a movie, right? I mean, we've seen a movie. We've never read anything, but you've seen like Avengers. On Netflix, like that. All right, so for the most part, we're on the, on the, on the same thing. Let's start by defining our terms. I'll just give it over to the card. We want to start by defining physics, and I'll talk a little bit about psychology, and then we're going to get right into it, right? Is that cool? If you guys want, you can have a pen and pencil and paper as well. I don't know if you want to take notes or not. This is not really a class, but you may have some questions. You may want to jot down on these put your phone. Okay. So, okay, we'll start with the, the basic idea. So, physics is one of the five major branches of science. Science is composed of five different branches. You have chemistry, which is generally considered the central science. You have biology, which is the study of life. You have um, astronomy, which is the study of space and time itself. Uh, you, have, you have earth science, which is the study of phenomenon like you know, volcanoes and the oceans and how that works, or planets in general. Uh, and then, of course, you have physics. And so physics is the study of how particles or objects in the universe interact with one another. Okay? So how objects in the universe. sense is not objects like cell phone, mouse. Objects is anything from the microcosm to the macrocosm. So let's <clears throat> say these two words, microcosm, microcosm and macrocosm. Macrocosm. So who can tell me what micro means? Small. Small and macro. Large. 
large, obviously. So we're talking about, and Cosm is in any scale. So we're talking about anything from the small scale to the massive scale. So we're talking about you know, protons and neutrons and electrons and all those tiny little particles. And we're talking about the large things like stars and, and galaxies and the universe itself, right? So um, what does everybody think about that? Anybody have any, uh, want some clarity on what physics is about generally? Before we jump in? Okay, cool. So um, in terms of physics, there are four fundamental forces that govern the universe. Just in the same way, like, has anyone ever seen the, um, the show Avatar on Nickelodeon? Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? So you know how you have the four elements that yeah. kind of govern, like, all their powers? There are four fundamental forces in the universe, right? Oh, I didn't even know that. Okay, so the four fundamental forces are gravitation. You have, which is, govern gravity. You have the electromagnetic force. Electromagnetism. You have, and now the last two you probably haven't heard of, right? You have the weak interaction or the weak force. Also called the weak nuclear force. The weak nuclear force. And then you have the strong force. Strong force. The strong force, right? So, I want I want to hear some of you guys. What is your understanding of gravity? Somebody, what do you think it is? What's gravity? What comes to mind when you hear the word gravity? <laughs> okay, that one movie. It's fun. Um, usually, whatever keeps any object or gravity being like basically kind of stable to the ground or floating above in the air or into space, depending. Nice, nice, nice. So what comes to mind when you hear electromagnetism? Right. Somebody know? Magneto. There you go. So what is your understanding of Magneto's power in the context of uh, electromagnetism? You can do a lot. Must be crazy. Okay. It's like he can control numbers. the electromagnetic force of everything around him. So, what is your understanding of the electromagnetic force? What do you think that is? What's your idea? Let's think about one another person. Okay. Infamous. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Like, that game, right? Yeah, the code. Yeah, okay. Who's infamous? Tell me about infamous. What's his powers? I don't think he generate electricity. Oh, it's a okay. game called Infamous, and, and the character I think his name is Cole, right? Yeah, Cole. Cole? And okay. And he can generate electricity. Okay, okay so let me, let me briefly, I'm going to briefly, and I'm going to as concisely as possible, explain these phenomena, these four fundamental forces, as I can. So, okay, gravitation, right? Gravitation is the weakest of the four forces in the universe, right? So it's literally the most weak force out of all four of these. However, on the macrocosmic scale, that is in terms of galaxies and star formations, in terms of how planets form, how objects that are massive in scale interact with each other, gravitation is the strongest. So on the macroscopic scale, gravitation is the dominant fundamental force, but on the microcosmic scale, it is the weakest. Is that clear, Terry mm -hmm. And the way this works is because gravity is always an attractive force. Your gravity attracts mass to, its, to each other. So like if you're out in space and then you have a whole bunch of dust just sitting there, then gravity is the force that's gonna be responsible to bringing that dust together, compressing it into one point. And so electromagnetism, on the other hand, deals with this idea of positive and negative charge. So if you have a magnet, the reasons why the ends attract to one another is because of this electromagnetic force. Whenever you have electricity, you have a magnetic field, and whenever you have magnetism, you have an electric field, right? So the weak force is the, the weak nuclear force, is responsible for the formation of stars, nuclear fusion, in terms of, of particles. And we'll talk about what particles are and all that sort of stuff later when nuclear fusion is the same. So it's responsible for a large amount of the radiation that comes from, say, superheroes that can blast energy and superheroes that can, um, or stars, the reason why you're getting heat right now is because of the weak force, the governing. The decay of force. The decay of material as well. Exactly. 
from, from the center are coming here. So, so very quickly, just to jump in, the weak force, guys, the weak force. Uh, so again, just to recap, there's the four fundamental forces of nature as we know now in science. That is to say that these forces are such that they are the artistic hand of the cosmos. The universe is the way it is for the most part because of these forces. Is that clear? All right. Just having a conversation with uh, gravity and electromagnetism. The weak force, in a sense, generates, among other things, it generates the radioactive decay. And you need radioactive decay in order for you to have multiplicity and, and variation in particles. So the reason why there's so, so many different kinds of particles comes out of the weak nuclear force. So if you didn't have a weak nuclear force, the universe would be pretty monotone and, yeah. and For an example, boring. If you it wouldn't look be at, as beautiful, it wouldn't be as, you know. If you look at the periodic table of elements, the reason why you have so many of them is because of this weak force. Because the, the larger elements that are sitting at the bottom of the periodic table that have these large amounts of um, protons and neutrons packed into them, if it weren't for the weak force, they wouldn't like split apart and form smaller elements, right? And so the strong force is arguably the most powerful one on the microcosmic scale. The strong force is responsible for binding together atoms, right? So, okay, I want you guys to imagine in your mind right now, right, the idea of a magnet. What would happen if you took, like, a whole bunch of magnets, right, all with the same end and you just put them together, what would happen? They would repel. They would all repel. So the strong force overrides the electromagnetic force and locks the protons, which are all positively charged, that want to fly away from each other because of electromagnetism, the strong force binds them together. It says, no, you guys are going to stick together and you're going to make atoms. That is how powerful it is. So, so in short, the strong force is the glue of the fabric of the cosmos. Yes. To use, to use sort of poetic language. This is what keeps all things together, right? How do you have protons and neutrons together in a, in a, in a in nucleus? That. All right, Alice. How would, I call it a nucleus, okay. but it is a nucleus, yeah. And Adam, right, how is it that they all think the strong force holds it together? It's, it's a very powerful force. And so, and so give me one more second, right? It's the glue of the fabric of the cosmos, but the cosmos overall, the universe overall, in terms of galaxies and stars, and this is going to be an important conversation, especially when we start talking about cosmic beings like Galactus and the Silver Surfer and whatnot. You know the Silver Surfer? Mm -hmm. Gravity is the glue in the big sense of the word. Yeah. Strong force, small sense, gravity, big sense. Um, I like you said the periodic table, the variety of, of particles come out of the weak force, and so on and so forth. All right, go ahead. Can you give me an example of in my in your life what the strong force does? Okay, so this idea, right? Okay, so um, as you know, right, your your body is composed of atoms, and like I said before, positively charged things. That have, they will repel each other, right? So the only reason right now why anything that you're observing right now in this room is clear, definite, concise, it's physical, the way you can in interact with it, is because these atoms are being locked in place by the strong force. So if the strong force isn't there, then what you would have is they would just all fly away as soon as they got close to them. So atoms would never form in the first place, you don't get molecules, and then you don't get complex beings like you and I. So, okay, so let's talk about some of the superheroes who, who, uh, whose powers fall into some of these categories. They're out of name. So the question is, what superheroes or supervillains, right, do you, you may be aware of that, that their power, right, their ability to manipulate something falls in line in one of these forces? Let's well, start raising it, right? Yeah. Well, the Hulk would be, I think, is the strong person. Interesting. The Hulk. Okay, let's just go to the Hulk. So I'll, write, I'll just write some of these up here, right, to the Hulk. So the possibility of the strong force, I'm going to put here, here SF for strong force, okay? I okay. don't have a question mark, see if that's possible. Okay. Hmm? I'm sorry, uh, say it again? You said there was um, something, in the, something in the, that had to do with radiation. Yeah, the weak force. The weak force is Yeah, I would say that's going to help. Because he does like, have gamma radiation. In, in he's not naturally just strong. Yeah, he's, he's not that strong. Because he was exposed to the Fantastic Four. Fantastic Four. What about the Fantastic Four? Which one? The Weak Force. Weak Force. In what sense the Fantastic Four? Because there's four people there. They all have yeah. different powers. They all. Um, so let's talk so about when Johnny Storm death. So you're saying in terms of what the radiation, the like genesis of all their powers? Yeah, like how, yeah. How is radiation? Okay. But I say Johnny Storm, his powers and the origin of his powers, because the origin he, he exposed to radiation. 
right? And his power is the explosion of heat of heat energy. Mm. Yeah, I like that. Let's, I think we you should basically explore, uh, say Johnny Storm. 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 Yeah. So let's explore Johnny Storm. You can basically first, say like, most of Marvel characters are weak force because they didn't get their powers naturally. And they all Besides, have well, there's a difference between arguing the origin of power and the nature of power, right? Right. Right. Because many of them may have gotten their power from the weak force in some right. way or variation. Right. But that doesn't necessarily imply that their power itself is based in the weak force. So the strong force, I think, maybe be Thor. Thor was born. Yeah, he's a god. He's a god. He was born as the therefore it was an animal. How about X-Men? They're mutants. They're plenty of mutants. They're mutants. They're mutants. They're now, they're again, bodies. you ask yourself, are there any superheroes or super villains mm -hmm. that their powers, right? Oh, Somehow oh, full yeah. to one of these. I like I like Johnny Storm. Can we explore Johnny Storm real quick? Let's talk about Johnny Storm. Does everyone know who Johnny Storm is? Yeah. yeah. No. AKA no. the Human, Human Torch. Torch. Human Torch. The guy who lights himself on fire. He's one of the Oh yeah, yeah. He's the one. Yeah. Sue Storm's okay. sister. I'm a brother. So he was the foundation. Of, <laughs> so the foundation. Oh, the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, what did you say? He was Captain America. In the movie. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. So and Johnny Storm. So Johnny Storm's primary ability, right, is to generate heat, as you said. And so this idea of heat, that, interestingly enough, the idea of projecting heat and fire would actually fall under the category of electromagnetism, believe it or not. And I'll explain to you why, right? Yes, sir. Electromagnetism would be any element that they can use for their body to be used as power. Well, when we it doesn't say, just have to be something that has to be electromagnetic. It could be a fire. It could be plants. It could be water. some kind of projection. Some kind, some kind of bending. If that's <laughs> what one of the best way I can describe it, and I'm not sure if this is going to address what you're saying correctly, but the electromagnetism is responsible for all phenomena involving the interactions of electrons, right? Okay. So maybe some of the things that you're saying would fall into that category, but not necessarily. So. Johnny Storm's power falls under the category of electromagnetism because electrons interact in an incredible number of ways. This number of ways is referred to as the electromagnetic spectrum. I would like to have a picture of what it looks like, but we'll, uh, we'll freestyle this. Yeah. So the electromagnetic spectrum is like this, right? You have, it's composed of waves. Right? And as the wavelengths alter, and I'll explain what the wavelength is in a second, you get different effects. So visible light, like from the sun or from these lights, they're a feature of electromagnetism. Heat itself is also a feature of electromagnetism. So you have, here you would have, um, this would be visible light right here. Is a uh, infrared on the right or the left? So you guys know from the Incredible Hulk, gamma ray radiation? Gamma yeah, radiation, that would all fall under electromagnetism, right? So, this is most part of it. Gravitation would be more psychic. No, we're not talking about that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, so this idea of, oh, I just mentioned this now, a wavelength, right? And so let me explain to you what a wave is. So there are two different, there are two fundamental, fundamental things, right, in physics. You have particles, and then you have waves. So a particle is a particular instance. Shh. It's a particular. It's a particular object in the universe, right? So it would be anything like a proton, it would be, or a photon, a proton, a neutron, anything like that. Now a wave is an oscillation through a medium, right? So if you think about like when you have water, and then a drop of water falls down, and then that that rippling out, that's a wave. Just like me speaking to you right now. I'm disrupting the air molecules that are in the air, and then you're perceiving that disruption of air molecules as sound. That's also a type of wave. Now you also have different types of wavelengths that are created by electrons and their behavior. So when electrons interact with each other in a certain way, right, sometimes they produce light, but sometimes they produce gamma radiation, and sometimes they produce infrared radiation. Infrared radiation is heat. You can't see it, but you feel it is heat, right? So heat and fire, like Johnny Storm's ability to project heat, is literally coming directly out of 
him interacting with electrons in a very interesting way. So infrared being Cyclops? Well, Cyclops' ability, I, mean, I, I see what you're saying, but um, Cyclops doesn't actually produce heat with his optic glass. I mean, they kind of make it look like it does in the, in the movies, but in the comics it doesn't. So I guess in the movies, yes, but in the comics, no. So the way that um, Jensen beats up, would, can you say that his electrons, they move faster to create heat? Well, we're, good question. So the idea is now, how do these electrons behave in order to elicit this, right? So the electrons, they're not exactly like jumping around and generating heat. I'll, I'll just for a second. So they're not like jumping around, right? So this idea is that they're moving through a medium, which is the space itself, and their interaction is causing heat to generate. They're exciting, they're exciting this medium, and they're, called, they're generating heat. It's not so much as very really like, you know. Define what heat is for everybody. So everyone kind of says clear uh, perception of what heat and cold is. Right. So cold, the simplest definition of cold is absence of heat. So you want to think of this in terms of versus like Iceman? Yeah. Or at least comes uh, Superman yeah. when he gets across. Which we're also to make a and freeze something. Right. So how, you know, what's the physics behind the cold in that sense? So, so okay. Thermal energy is, like I said, a function of infrared. Right? So heat is coming out of electrons behaving and generating heat, right? So now cold, someone like, um, you just said Iceman, his power is not even, he's not projecting, say, ice at something. What he's actually doing is he's dramatically absorbing the heat out of something. That's the big difference. So what Iceman is doing is like, he's walking up to like something that's hot, He's going like this, and then all the heat is just literally, all the infrared rays are flying out of it and going into it, he's absorbing it. So he's not even projecting anything, he's absorbing energy. Well, in other words, so so when you think of heat, heat is nothing more than the excitation of particles, right? So if you were, if you were able to have an image of what heat is, it's nothing more than particles moving faster, right? Colliding more and more. That excited state is what produces heat. Cold is just, Slowing down, slowing down, yeah, right, there's lots of cancellation of particles. And in order to change going from hot to cold, you either are extracting energy or, in, or, putting, or you're putting energy, energy in. That makes right. so much sense. Yeah. yeah. So when you see suit, when you see Iceman, right, because it looks like, right, when you see Iceman shooting something you know, he's actually pulling it out. Right. What's he's really doing, what he's really, right. So watch this. It would actually look like something like, okay, so, so let's say, I'm, I mean, I'm not an artist. <laughs> I don't, it, it, let's say that's just, wow, that's scary. Oh my gosh. How many fingers? Oh, I know. <laughs> that's wow. psychotic. I hope yeah. your hand doesn't, okay. Let's say your hand, right, that's that's Iceman's hand, and you have, you know, this how they show, right, he's projecting, right? It's like, so, it's like his hand going like that, right? And you see the power. What's, <laughs> you're like a little kid, I'm like, you see the power. <laughs> and you see the ice being projected, right? What is happening here? What's happening is, is that there's really, in essence, he's not really projecting anything out. In his power, he is taking out of the air energy. He's absorbing heat. And that, if you think about it, and that's what makes it ice. And that's why he's yeah. able to go right away, but right and slide and do or shoot, like throw ice or whatever the case is, or freeze. And it's, it's a very wide. precise level of control too. Because very you think precise. About it, he has the ability to not only um, specifically target something in such a way that, like say the chair, right? He freezes the chair, and he freezes the path from his hand along the chair, but he can still keep all this area of space around him hot. hot. So that's pretty interesting, his mm -hmm. precise control. So if you really wanted to think about it in terms of what his power actually is, it's not even just absorbing heat. He has the ability to precisely control how heat is interacting in space. So in theory, he should have the ability to generate heat just as much as he has the ability to But he doesn't, it. right. But he in, doesn't. In theory, he should be able to do that, but he doesn't. It only works like in one way. And this is why the, the later um, uh, um, Iceman, he's very powerful, right? Yeah. So you know, for those of you who are aware of uh, X-Men and those who, who have like mutant powers, let's say like Magneto or Xavier, as they continue to train, you know they get what with their powers? They get better, yeah. right? They get better. And so what that usually means is that they have the ability to with minutia and great detail manipulate the force of the hand. With Iceman, Iceman is then later on able to make his body brawl like the Hulk, right? Yeah, how I many of you have seen that, right? Or, or make uh, certain objects up, right, sharp. He can also freeze your internal organs, which would be an instant death. <laughs> 
right? So typically when you see uh, uh, Iceman, right, what does he do? He, he, can, he can punch you, he can freeze you, a block of ice. But he can actually kill you if you wanted to because he can freeze your internal organs, freeze your brain capacity, and you're dead instantaneously. So this is like when he gets very, it's like when the example of Magneto, which Magneto is a classical individual, somebody who's manipulating the second a fundamental force of, of nature, electromagnetism. For the early Magneto, earlier forms of Magneto, he needs what? Metal to manipulate. Right, well, it's right. It's in a sense easier. Later forms, for those of you who read comic books, he doesn't need metal anymore. Right? He's able to take, he's able to extract the iron in your blood, which is metallic in nature. And other compounds. And kill you like that. Okay. I mean, if you really want, let's talk about Magneto sometime on top. If Magneto. you really wanted to talk about the scope of his power. So there's a whole spectrum, right? He, by the very nature of his ability, he should be, right, one of the most powerful, powerful individuals in, in the Marvel. universe, right? He has the entire spectrum.